All right, so now we've looked at uh, tangent to normal to lift in Cartesian form, so we're now going to have a look at it in parametric form. Okay, so the equation of the tangent, so parametric forms, remember, um, x is a cos theta and y is b sine theta for your ellipse, and we've derived that in earlier lesson there. So we're going to be given by that equation there, x cos theta over a plus y sine theta over b is equal to 1. Okay, my microphone the charging so hopefully have a pick up my audio. All right, so we're going to prove that. All right, to prove. 2.8. Okay, so we know x is a cos theta and y is a sin theta. That's a b sin theta. Okay, so we're doing a very similar setup to what we did for the proof in Cartesian form. So the first thing we have to do is implicitly differentiate to get dy dx. Okay, so dy dx using the chain rule because I've got x's in terms of theta and also got y's in terms of theta. So it's going to be dy d theta differentiate y with respect to theta times d theta over dx. Function of a function, chain rule. Alright, so we're going to cancel this, I'm left with dy dx. Okay, so um, dy d theta. Okay, so I've differentiated y with respect to theta. So good timing yesterday, we did this. Alright, so we differentiate sine, we get cos. Alright, so we've got sine there, so we're differentiating, we've got b cos. Okay, dx, d theta, so we're differentiating x respect to theta, we differentiate sine, we get cos. So when we differentiate cos, we're going to get negative sine, negative a sine theta. Okay, and then I'll substitute that into here. So dy, d theta, so b cos theta. And then d theta dx, so this is dx d theta, so I need to flip it. Okay, so this will be uh, d theta dx is going to be one, uh, negative 1 over a sine theta. Okay, so really what I'm doing is here is just writing this in the bottom. Yep. So that's the gradient of your tangent, dy dx. That's what we're doing is implicit differentiation, but we don't have to implicit differentiate uh, because I don't have x's and y's. I've got theta there, parametric, so I can do it this way instead. Right, so y take away y1. Start multiply. Yep. Uh, so I know got sine squared, cos squared, the same factor. Okay, so I can make that plus, sine squared plus cos squared, I can eliminate that parameter there. So A, <coughs> uh, move this to the left. So 
that's the sine squared plus cos squared is 1. So looking at it as a result, we need 1 side to equal 1. Okay, so if I divide everything by AB, that'll achieve what I need on the left hand side. Okay, so divide by AB, everything. So we've got um, just reordering compared to cos theta over A plus Y sine theta. Okay, so again, it's another formula. Okay, so you either remember the formula and apply it, or we need to derive it like so then. Yep. So now we've got the normal at the same point is given by that equation. Okay, so the perpendicular gradient. Okay, so we just need to flip and change the sign. So it becomes A sine theta over B cos theta. Okay, and then the equation B cos theta y minus b sine theta is a sine theta x minus a cos. Okay, so we've already brought up multiplied for one point gradient. Okay, expand it all out. Okay, so now we need to start grouping so we can get that. So I'm noticing on the left hand, up the right hand side, we've got a squared, take away b squared. Yep, so I can factorise that in the same term, like to bring that over. So if I bring this bit to the other side, it becomes a positive. It becomes a squared, take away b squared when I factorise sine theta cos theta. Okay, so you might need to show an extra step. Yep, so it's A x sine theta take away B y cos theta. Okay, so I'm getting towards what I need. So I've got a squared take away b squared, so if I divide everything by sine theta cos theta, I'll get what I need on the right hand side, okay? Again, another formula, you need to remember it and use it or derive it. Okay? Question. Alright, so find the equation of the tangent from all to the ellipse of x equals 3 cos theta y equals 2 sine theta at the point where theta is 2, 5, and 3. Okay, so again, we've got this in parametric form x a cos theta y b sine theta, and we've got the value for theta, so that will give us the specific point on that ellipse. Okay, so we need dy dx. Okay, so 
we've only got x with respect to theta and y also with respect to theta. So using my chain rule, I'm going to be dy d theta times d theta dx because I have an expression. I can come up with an expression for each of those there. Okay, so dy d theta. Okay, so we differentiate sine, we get cos. So we get 2 cos um, theta. Okay, so when I do dx d theta, it's going to be negative 3 sine theta. And I need d theta direct, so it's going to be negative 1 on 3. So it's going to be negative 3 sine theta. Okay, so I could write, unfortunately that's not 10, so I couldn't really do that, and I'm trying to do cot. I could do that. Alright. Going to be negative 2 over 3 cot of theta. Okay, it's because I need the specific gradient. Okay, so theta is 2 pi and 3. Okay. Make it a bit easier for ourselves. 2 over 3, 10 theta. Right, because I can work with 10 theta easier than I work with cos of theta. Alright, so theta is 2 pi and 3. So in theta, 2 pi and 3, dy dx is going to be negative 2 over 3, 10, 2 pi and 3. Alright, um, 2 pi and 3, what's that in degrees? 120. 120, so we've got 10 over 120, which is the angle in the second quadrant, so 180 take away the basic angle equals 120, so the basic angle is going to be 60 degrees. Okay, so the basic angle is pi over 3. Okay, and in the second quadrant, 10 70. Okay, so 10 of 2 pi and 3 is going to be negative, equal to negative 10 of pi and 3. And what is 10 of root 3? Okay, so we need negative 3 root 3. Alright. And we need to also consider the point 3 cos theta and 2 sine theta. Alright, so x is 3 cos of 2 pi and 3. So okay, so cos of 120 is going to equal negative cos of 60. So what's cos of 60? 1 over 2. 1 over 2. So we negative 3 over 2. Once you incorporate the negative sign. But y is 2 sine of 2 pi on 3. The sine of 120 is the same as the sine of 60. The sine of 60 is? Root 3 over 2. So we've got 2 times root 3 over 2. Alright, so y minus root 3 is going to be 2 over 3 root 3. So y is going to be 2 over 3 root 3x plus 2 times 3 over 2, so plus 3 over, hang on, so it has to be 1 on root 3. Alright, 
I've got a cat quite handy. You can just do two over through three for me. Zero point three eight four nine zero zero Good. one one. Yep, so I'll check this Joe's road and that's through the way. And can do one A and do the root three, take away root three. Uh, plus root three, sorry. One over root three, plus root three. Two point three one. Yeah. Alright, uh, so how we use that skill there. Alright, so next question here. So the tangent to the ellipse of x squared plus a squared plus y squared on b squared equals 1 at the point P, a and b. Meet the axes at m and n respectively. So if o is the centre, find the area o, m and n. Alright, so what that's saying is you have some ellipse. You have some point um, P on the ellipse. The tangent to that meets the axes at M and N respectively. When they say respectively, X axis M, Y axis N. Then, if O is the centre, we need to find the area of O, M, N. Okay, which is our right, right angle triangle there. Right, so if we find the distance OM and the distance ON, we can then find the area of triangle OMN. Alright, so from the previous page, I'm not going to drive it again. Um, equation of the tangent is that. Okay. The tangent. So x cos theta over a plus y sine theta on b plus 1. Okay, so we just need to find the intercepts here and here using that. So we've got the general point, we haven't told, been told anything else with this, and also we haven't been told anything with a's and b's either. So that's our general form. Alright, so x intercepts. Okay, set so the opposite letter equal to zero. Um, so that means um, x is going to be a over cos theta once you read it up. Yep. It's good to be zero, multiply by a, multiply by cos theta. Yep. Alright, so y intercept. Zero. Okay, so similarly, y is going to be over sine theta. Okay, so the area will be half times O n times O n for the triangle. So because we found the intercepts, we've got the coordinates of m and n. Half times O M, which is the x-intercept. So A B over sine theta cos theta. And what do I have on the bottom? Two sine theta cos theta. That should ring a bell. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, what is it? 2 sine theta cos theta is? 10? No. What was it? Now, we technically should be saying the absolute value because we can have 
um, P over here, and that will give us the negative coordinate for M and N. Okay, so we should probably take, so we should state the output of A. Alright, because we want the area of the triangle. Alright, hence find the position of P for which I have triangle O, M, N has the smallest area. Pattern? Like In the middle. In the middle. Like on the corner. On the very where. What angle? Using your modulus skill. Um. Okay. The area is A to B over sine to theta. Okay, so we need to determine. The position of P, which that makes it the smallest. Okay, now what's the variable? Which one changes, A, B, or sine to theta? A, A, B. Really? Because they're the constant distance for your axes <laughs> here and there. Okay, because that's tracing the point of your ellipse, but your A's and B's are going to stay constant. Okay, so it's going to be dependent on the value for sine to theta. Okay. So, what do you remember about the graph of sine 2 theta? What is the amplitude? Uh, two. No, two, amplitude, one. one, period is? Two. Two. 2 pi over b. 2 pi over 2, so it'd be pi. Yep. Right? So, what this is saying is um, this is 1 and negative 1, and this period is pi here, pi on 2. Okay, what can you tell me about the minimum base of that graph? 1. one. So, if the absolute value sine theta, sine 2 theta, must be less than or equal to 1. Okay? So, thinking about it, when you're dividing by a number and you want it to be less than or equal to 1, it has to be less than or equal to 1, so a number between 0 and 1, inclusive, okay, what do we need the value for sine 2 theta to be that will give this the smallest area? Sine 2 theta. Sine 2 If I do sine of, uh, if I divide by 0 0.9, will that make this bigger or smaller? Divide. Divide by a number less than 1. Bigger. Bigger. 2 divided by a half is 4. Yeah. Yes, that makes it bigger. So, what do I need this value to be that matches that condition there? Less than 1. Like... 0.9 Ah Like Zero Less than Even close to zero Times it Something The general <laughs> The general value on the denominator What does that need that value to be That matches this condition That will make this the smallest area What do I need to divide by Okay, if I divide this by 1, it'll give me the smallest area, okay? So we now need to determine the position of P, okay? So area will be smallest when we are dividing by the biggest number possible on the bottom. So the bigger the number, the smaller the overall result that we divide. And the biggest number we can divide is 1. So when sine of 2 theta... Okay. That took way too long to get. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and this sort of just girls that you need to come pulling off different subjects and thinking about in applications when you're doing these sort of questions. Okay, so sine of what angle equals one? Pi on two. Pi on two. Pi on two. So 
sign of the general sign curve. Oh, general sign curve. Yeah, not that one. General sign curve, okay? Pi L2 equals 1. That's our basic angle. Okay, sine of pi L2, the basic angle is pi L2. Okay, and we're going to actually consider that for all quadrants because we are taking the absolute value of area in there, so we need to consider all the possible positions we can be. Okay, so we have 2 theta can equal pi on 2, basic angle in the first quadrant, and angle in the second quadrant, pi take away pi on 2, which is still pi on 2, and the third quadrant, pi plus pi on 2. Is the 270 and fourth quadrant is going to be 2 pi take away pi on 2, which is the same as that. Okay, therefore theta must be pi on 4, 3 pi on 4. So pi on 4 is Angle, what degree is pi on 4? I'm going to use like that's all that is. I'm all this stuff back. Half 180. Half 180. 190. Half 90. 45. 45. So 45 <laughs> degrees that way. Yeah. Okay. 3 pi on 4 is 135. Okay. But we can still have these two positions here and here. Okay, because we can go around again on my original answer because I've changed the domain. Okay, and then I'll need to write down these two as well. Okay, so following the pattern, it's going to be 5 pi on 4 and 7 pi. So once theta reaches that angle, the triangle O, M, N, that triangle, will be the smallest. Okay, so as I move, it's going to get bigger. Okay, as I move around, if I pick the point here, for example, okay, and I've got that tangent there, okay, somehow that gets bigger. All right, but that's mathematically, that's true. All right, so that's what's happening. So that's the sort of thinking we need to be able to do um, to be successful at um, doing these sort of questions here. Yeah. Any questions there? I got that. Alright, I've got to go to the meeting. Okay.